Hi, my name is Jennifer Schindler and welcome to Acorns and Twigs' video. I am today going to show you how to make these little birds. I have a little green one here. And I have a little bluebird here and this little peach colored one. And they require no felting skills, so you don't even need a felting needle. Um, you just need some wool and a thread if you want to hang it up. Um, I have it in two different colors, so you're going to want one for your main, the main color for your bird, and then you're going to want to choose a beak color. These are very easy crafts for um, even to work with children with. I've done this with a kindergarten class of three to six year olds. And um, yeah, I'd like to show it to you today. Okay, so like I said, today we're going to work with some wool. Um, I'm gonna take something out of our 57 color set. So we, and I think I'm going to make a little red cardinal using this brick red. And then for its beak, hmm, I don't know, I think, I don't wanna to go too crazy. Let's go with, hmm, let's go with an ochre. I think ochre looks good. Okay. My box is a bit beat up. I'm using it a lot. I just re keep filling it back up once I've used the wool. Um, so if you are using one of our sets, you're going to find your wool in little balls like this. All you have to do is carefully find the beginning. So I kind of like to easily pull on it, or you can just like kind of pull it apart like this and you'll find it just like that. So your strand will be about this size. Um, it doesn't have to be a certain size. Uh, I recommend just watching the video one time through so you kind of have an idea of what we're doing and then watch it again a second time and work with, with me on the second time. So um, I'm gonna put the bead color away for now. What we need to do is pull the wool top apart. You don't want to have your hands too close otherwise you won't be able to pull apart the top. So the trick is to keep them nice and part, apart from each other and we're going to pull off a piece like that and I think this will be good for the wings. Now since this is the end piece I kind of like to pull a little bit on that too because it kind of mats together. So I'm just going to pull off the very 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 tip of it so that the ends are, are similar. See how that kind of just frays out. So these will be the wings. I want to set those to the side for now. Now this other piece that we just pulled off will be the body. But this is still a pretty darn big bird. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut, fold it in half. So that's how you can get an idea of what size the bird will be. So I kind of would like to have it smaller. So I'm going to pull on this other end, which was also kind of, um, kind of felted and matted. So I'm just going to pull that part off. We don't need that. Um, let me think. I'm wondering if we should pull it in half, if this is going to be too thick. Yeah, I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to split this in half so it's half as thick. Or just maybe it's not quite in half, but I got a good chunk of it off. Okay. Don't worry about it if it falls apart like this. You can either remove it completely or maybe even use the other half that I pulled off. Yeah, I think I like that one better. Um, so, okay. Now what we're going to do is using this, that the part that I just kind of pulled off, I'm going to take off little wisps like this. And if you twist it, it'll be like a thread. This is even pretty thick still, so I'm just actually going to take even less. Just very, very little, right? And I'm going to set that to the side because we'll need that later. And now, 
You're going to take your beak color, also open it up, find the end, and open it up. And here, you don't need very much. We'll just take a little bit. Even this is probably still too much. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, so I'm going to put this on top of the red in the middle. Middle here, middle here. About the middle. This doesn't have to be perfect. What we're going to do now is we're going to take that very, very thin piece of uh, wool that we used and we're going to find the middle and we're just going to kind of wrap it around. If you didn't get enough, you'll just grab a little bit more red. So this is just trying to fixate the beak color. If you wanted to, you could kind of pull them apart so they don't mingle together too much. And then we're going to fold it in half so you can kind of already tell this is the beak. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of red, a wisp of red, and just a little bit, kind of twist it a little bit. And then we're going to make a like a head shape. We'll give it about that size. I'm going to wrap this thread piece around the head. Okay, so now we have the head. Don't worry about the beak, we'll figure that out at the end. Now, you can, should be able to still see those two halves that we laid upon each other, right? What we're going to do is we're going to take our wings. We're going to lay them. These might actually be pretty big wings for this little bird that I'm making here. Eh, it's okay. We can, we can live with that. So we just kind of sandwiched it in there, about in the middle. And again, I'm going to take a little... I think I had one still left over. A little whiff of red. And now we're going to tie off the, the midsection of the bird right behind the wings. And you want to go all the way down to the very, very last tip of this. Um, that little whiff of, of wool. Because that will make it stick. That way you don't have to, you don't have to sew, you don't have to felt, you don't have to use a needle or anything. If you get it nice and tight and uh, nice and tight and all the way down to the very last thread, it will hold onto itself. And that, as you can tell, is pretty much the base of our bird. Now if you wanted to and you had enough, mine kind of got a little bit thin back here, you could, I do not, I'm not a friend of cutting wool. There are many different opinions out there and I'm on the side of never cutting wool unless you absolutely need to. We will need to later on for the beak and that's a special situation. Other than that, I would say try never to cut the wool, especially if you're felting, but that's a whole different thing. For this situation, I kind of like it to kind of fray out at the end. You could also split it so it kind of has like a pointy tail like that just kind of shape it with your fingers right um yeah so that's the body and now we're going to work on the beak what you need to do here you will need a, a sharp scissors and what you can do well, first of all, let's, let's just like definitely trim it for a little bit. Definitely get rid of that excess. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, don't pull it out, otherwise you'll pull it out and it'll be gone. But what I'm just going to do is gently twist it with my fingers. I might lick my fingers a little bit, get it kind of wet. Right? And then, 
going to cut it at a point. Don't want to get it too short. Okay, and then the other side. Okay, I'm pulled on that too much, didn't I? The beak requires a bit of an imagination, but I'm just kind of just it. Make sure it doesn't slip out. And there you have a cute little beak. Okay, so now if you wanted to, like I did, you could hang it into a branch. For that, I use a neutral thread, sewing thread. You can use, I'm using beige. You could use um, clear. You could use fishing line, white, um, the same color as your bird. Um, if your tree, if your branch has, still has leaves on it, then you can use maybe a green. So it just kind of camouflages in there. I like this one. It seems to kind of go with everything. I'm going to cut off a nice length and grab my sewing needle. See if I can get it in through the first time. Oop. I did have it in there. Do that again. There we go. Um, so depending on how you want your bird to fly, if you want it to be flying up, then you're gonna wanna put your thread in a little bit further towards the, the head. A slight, slight up would be about like that. And I like to have it just back here and that will balance it out. I like to test it before I tie my knot. Yep, yeah, I like that. Okay, and then you just tie it off and a knot. Like so. There we go. I like tying it off right above the knot. And wait, I'm gonna go my scraps while I'm at it. There we go. And then I also, little trick, I like to take the knot, see that knot right there? I'm gonna pull it through and then hide it inside the wool. Or somewhat, at least close to the bird. We've just made a little flying bird without sewing, without glue, without a felting needle. And this is a great craft for even the youngest little ones that can help you. Um, it's great for Easter, springtime, even the fall when the birds are, uh, where if you live in an area like me, I'm in Iowa, and so um, here in the fall, the birds are leaving, going south. So whatever is happening outside your door in your area, bring it inside. Make a nature table. I have, um, I always have a nature table out, and let me bring that back. So let's see if I can hang, find a place for my little cardinal. It's almost pretty full already. <laughs> I'll put it right down there. He's just taking off. This is our early spring nature table cloth. Um, it's a, a beautiful color for early childhood classrooms in case you homeschool. Um, this is a great color to hang in your window as a uh, tapestry. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed making your little bird with me. I'd love to see pictures. Um, if you feel called to share, um, you can either send it to us per email at info at acornsandtwigs.com or you can post it to any of our social media channels. We are on Facebook and on Instagram. I can't wait to see what you end up making with all of your little birdies. Until next time.